we've got some cool stuff to give away and legend alert or as one of you said when you heard about our guest coming holy freaking hannah you're at the place <laughs> pensado's place yeah. What's up, guys? Good to see you, man. It's a special day for me. Um, for this, us. Is, this is this is something I've been looking forward to for a long time. I actually was in Vegas, Herb, mm -hmm. and there's a little wall at the studio at the Palms, and I, I actually had my picture taken next to something that this man wrote on the wall. <laughs> That's how crazy it was. He deserves. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Um, good week. Um, you know, it's Grammy week. It's nutty. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff we can't get to because we're busy, and you're mm -hmm. doing cool stuff. Got a uh, shout out to some folks last night who were, uh, last night being Thursday night, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, uh, last night being Wednesday night, actually, where I got an award for... Um, Congratulations. Thank you, but partially for what's going on with the show. So, again, to our audience, thank you for that. To the Singleton Corp and Lynn Jeter, thank you for that. And, um, listen, I think we get to the, the business affairs stuff and get to the guest. What do you think? Well, if you look at your notes, that was my suggestion. Right, it says that. <laughs> so, so in following your lead, oh, host, Captain. Why are you wasting time with me, Herb? Okay, cool. Then I won't. So, uh, as usual, to our Vintage King friends. You on that one, didn't You I? did. <laughs> to our Vintage King friends, hello. We know we love you. We got Jacob Schneider in the corner Jacob. office. Jacob. There's Jacob's screen. Hey, Jacob, what's happening? Um, good stuff there. Um, and another thing, let's talk about our friends at Avid who have come up with a great promotion. Oh, so for four weeks, we will be giving away one of these wonderful Pro Tools 10. It's about a $699 value thing. Um, they are really stepping up. And, you know, they've been very good to us, and we're going to be very good to you and get that stuff to you. So here's how you enter it. You, Will will show you some stuff on screen, but as you can see right there, um, what you're going to do is you can enter by, you, by going to Facebook, or, or entering your email, but they've been very philanthropic and very cool with us and very generous. So if you like the Facebook Avid for Students page, it actually increases your chances for winning. If you share that and you like the Facebook Avid for Students page, it will increase your opportunities to win. So do that. Um, it, it helps us. Please do it, Dan. So, so through the grace of having great relationships with these guys and with Vintage King and other stuff, we try to bring you things. So let's get an intense thing going for four weeks for them and show them how much you participate and then win this, win this great thing and, uh, and make your mixes better. So we're excited about that. Um, what other stuff is there? Is that it? You know where to find us, as usual. Um, our homework page is up there. There you see it. Facebook, Twitter, pensadosplace.tv. Thanks for all your information um, that comes to our website and more stuff to come. So, without further ado, I think we get right to the matters at hand. Well, first of all, I want to say thanks to Christian Rob Robles for uh, making this happen. Christian is uh, Roberto's engineer. They work very closely together. and. Uh, He's sitting to my right, so I'm going to look to my right and say, thank you, Christian. You're welcome. Um, I just found out today that, uh, that well, I'm going to skip that, that for a second, but Umberto is one of the engineers. You guys... Uh, Umberto who? Umberto Gatica. I was going to be a little formal later, but um, um, you guys, they've been watching the show. You know that, that this show is just an excuse for me to hang out with people I've admired and, and have been influential on my career for a long time. And uh, today is, is, is one of the best, one of my favorites, uh, partly because he's, he's uh, from the Spanish-speaking world, like my parents, and I just found out today that his family and my family are from the same part of Spain, mm. uh, the northern part of Spain. Uh, Umberto Gatica has won 15 Grammys. He's... Um, his records are, I mean, I'd love for somebody to tally how many records he sold, because I think his, his record sales are bigger than the United States economy right now. It could be the <laughs> size of the American national debt right now. Well, it's quite his, possible. Quite, his, possible. quite possible. In fact, he could have caused the debt by people spending their money on these records. Uh, President Obama's on hold on three when we're done for yeah, him. Wants to, uh, wants check this out. Once we resolve it. I, in case you guys don't know, I'm not going to read the whole list, because that'd be like five shows just to read his credits, but some of the ones I picked out that, that were very influential on me were Mariah Carey, uh, Andrea Bocelli, Celine Dion, Barbara Streisand, uh, Shaka Khan, Madonna, 
anybody named Jackson, Michael and Janet, uh, the good records, uh, Thriller, he won a Grammy for Thriller, uh, and Bad too, he won a Grammy for Bad too, uh, Josh Groban, uh, and then Luis Miguel, an incredible artist that you should go look up if you're not from the Latin world. Um, Alejandro Sanz, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Lale uh, in a moment. Um, just on and on and on and on, like I always tell you every week, do your homework, Google uh, Umberto, and, and, and there's, there's so much that we're going to learn today, and I can't wait to get into it. My friend, thank you so much for being so here. So happy to be here. You're Pleasure. so busy, you're yes. working so much, and to take time to share some things with our audiences just shows what, a, what an incredible human being, not just Mixer, you truly are. Well, just let me say thank you for, I'm just so grateful to be here. Uh, thank you, Christian, because you, you kind of like, uh, you make me aware of what's going on on your show. And what can I tell you? I'm just having a good time and oh, good. ready to say okay. what is in the heart. And then well, we'll you've, never, you've never been able to do anything else. Your records are so passionate. They're, they're honest records. They're from the heart. And uh, your interview can't be anything less, I know. Um, you, 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 you track your own records, you engineer your records, you, you mix your records, you, you're a producer, you're a writer, you also do part-time work as a psychiatrist, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do, have, I do after hours. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to talk about Actually, this. it's true. Every Very artist true. you work with say. just says, says, oh my gosh, you know. Um, how do you go about creating a unique sound for all these artists are, are so different, and, and, and a, a lot of people with less talent would make the same record over 20 times. You make a unique individual record for each artist. Is that because you have so much control? Is that the way you, you hear music? You let the artist dictate? You know, basically, my personality, I think since I came to this country, I was 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. No English, just a, just a dream. Just a, just a, big dream to succeed in one of the greatest countries on the planet, I would say the greatest. So I have always been able to adjust to the environment real fast. That's one of the gifts I think God gave me to say, here, it's cold, deal with, survive. This is hot, deal with. Mm -hmm. So each and every artist sort of present an energy. I'm very sensitive about that. I, I sort of capture the energy. Uh, I kind of take it couple of Polaroid pictures exactly where they are personality wise and, mm -hmm. and musically and, and I just begin to uh, um, perform in, in, in a way that is um, I have to this is important too I have to feel good about it I have mm -hmm. to feel the music so I'd be able to be honest say check my work what do you think and, mm -hmm. and, and I think they, they, they sense that they, they feel it mm -hmm. I've been very fortunate to work with uh, people that have tremendous skill as as performers or as singers and so with the great voices and with a great passion so that sort of stimulates it in sort of a so I immediately I'm in their lane immediately I'm in their world and now I'm here to my job is to uh, uh, um, magnify that for them in um, other words you're saying um, you, you, you can't really make a record for an individual until you know the individual. How can you... I, 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 that's very important, you know. Uh, um, like, 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 I like to know when I first... My, one of my... I got to tell you, my very first experience in the studio, it was many years back, many, many years back, and it was given to me by a, one of the greatest um, uh, arrangers at the time, producer, and a, a guy named Don Costa. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And... One of the guys, he was a producer, and the arranger was a guy named Nelson Riddle. So sure. oh, at the goodness. time, I don't think I have enough experience to really value who was in front of me mm -hmm. and who was trusting me in the technical part in order for him as a producer to express his, uh, his production and, and as, as an arranger. And um, um, my English was very limited. It still is. No, you're interested. <laughs> Somehow, great. after all this year being in this country, I have an accent, and I'm proud of it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I'm very proud of it. Absolutely. Well, the way I grew up, you don't have an accent to me. <laughs> I mean, you sound like everybody in my so, family. So from the very beginning, I, I, I remember the, the man who walked in the studio to do this record. It was a man named uh, Sammy David Jr. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is, this is something that I can only dream of. This, of, this is mm -hmm. the man who 
uh, you know, it was a, such a controversial man at the time. He married to a white lady from mm -hmm. from Scandinavia, yeah. Sweden, yeah. and and he's missing an eye. But the guy has this thing, and he's, he's he has this uh, tremendous personality. And immediately, this is a guy who is a survivor. This guy, this is a strong personality. And immediately, I sort of, my job is just to understand where he's at, be prepared. Most important for all those others, be prepared. Be prepared. I think a preparation is a success. If you prepare, and I tell sometimes Christian, my engineer, that, you know, preparation is the key to success, man. You can never go wrong. When mm -hmm. you are there, head of the game, mm -hmm. you just, you, you're winning. Mm -hmm. But when you're chasing, you tell, man, it just never ends. So it's been like that through the course, you know, and then I enter a time where I did a lot of bubblegum music, I'm proud of it, because it allowed me to mature. And then it, through the years, uh, I, I, I'm going to jump immediately to to the time that I, I hook up with uh, uh, a great producer, a great musician named David Foster, uh, and we begin to work together. I was his engineer for a few of, the, of his projects. Yeah. And, and then eventually, you know, uh, one of the greatest artists that I worked with uh, uh, um, for the first time was a, a, a young lady from um, Montreal named Celine Dion. Yeah. And then I realized the, the, the magnitude of, of her talented and, and and again, very passionate, you know, very mm -hmm. passionate. And I learned through the year, working with her, to be able to magnify, and, and she was always grateful to me by saying, thank you for bringing my emotions out. Thank you for, for putting what I try so hard to put on a record, and, you are, and, you, and you, you're doing that for me. Because I felt it, I felt it. And for me, her voice was, it was something that it had so much power, so much, it was so alive. Every, every word had, a, had some kind, so, so I got into her thing, and, and we built an incredible relationship. And, and then after that, I, was, I became an engineer who had a tremendous amount of heart for, for, for the artist, mm -hmm. for the voice, mm -hmm. whether it was a pop, uh, classical, and, and even some of the, I would say, rock stuff that I did with n not necessarily hardcore rock artists, but um, so I, I, I somehow I, 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 I adjust myself to the environment very well. That's uh, cool. Let me ask you this, Umberto. You, you mentioned the importance of the voice. Um, that seems to be almost the foundation that a lot of your creativity starts from. You, 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 you view the, the, the voice and the, and the groove or the drums as the two most, most important elements in the mix, I, I've heard you say before. Um, is, is, is that an accurate statement? I mean, like, you actually start mixing. A lot of people ask, how do you start your mix? Well, you start with the vocal. Exactly. There are many ways to sort of, uh, uh, sort of build the foundation. But the spinal cord for me of, of, of anything is, is around. So the first thing I do is just I begin to sort of uh, um, to listen and process the vocal, try to, uh, again, you know, uh, bring out... Uh, I get really deep because I, I, it's not just the performance. It just, it's just it's the tonality of the vocal, what makes it pleasant and what makes it the vocal to... to, to kind of like touch in, 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 in sort of a never lose that, that place. Uh -huh. So I, I, I start that and, and then eventually I start sort of a, um, surround the vocal with basic rhythm, basic harmonics, whatever is the, the structure of the song. But you start more with the rhythm. With the rhythm, basically, the yeah. Instrument. yeah. Okay. And, then, and then if it, the vocal feels, if she can sing, or him or them can sing and feel good with just an overhead, just mm -hmm. even that needs to be tuned to the vocal. Everything must be in relation to the vocal. Yeah. Was the impact of a snare, or is the bass overtone that is ringing over a vocal note, mm. something is, is somehow hindering the vocal. Right away, I figured out, is wow. it a problem with the vocal, or is it a problem with the bass? Mm. Is it a sustain in the piano? Because I want to hear my piano as beautiful and as, as defined as can possibly be. So, so I entered this, this sort of a arena, I like, a, I like it's an arena of all the things that, I, that I'm fighting, you know. It's like uh, here is the, mm -hmm. the vocal is, is, is ruling, man, and here mm -hmm. comes a, a thing that somehow will hinder the, the, the melodic aspect in the vocal uh -huh. performance. And right away I say, okay, I many times I tell Christian, no, don't, don't mess with the vocal. Let's figure out what is causing the problem. Uh -huh. and, and we dissect it and we go inside and, and then we use technology, which is now it, it's so easy to, to, to automate things. And I begin to create this. I begin. That's, that's, I'm in the arena now. I'm performing. And, and little by little, we keep building it up. 
create layers or eventually the vocal never loses place. And you can say to me, why did the music has so much power, but the vocal never loses its place? Never. And never at one point get hindered that you lost them. Right. I lost the character. The main character got lost in the, in the shuffle. Like Blue Blade, your Blue Blade records, those drums are like hip hop drums. They're banging, but you never lose that voice. Because I like, I like drum. I, I'm, 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 like I tell Christian, I'm, I'm, I'm a frustrated drummer, and, mm -hmm. and he's the rocker, and I'm not. And, 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 he, and I want to have, I want to have all that, but all in perspective, and always in, 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 in uh, around the, the performer. You, you know, in, in hearing what you're saying and in researching stuff about you, what, what struck me immediately, and which I think is really instructive for our audience is that you have such love for the artist and the artistry that I think it allows your artistry to come out more. You, you match the level of their artistry and you sort of challenge yourself in your own art to meet that. Is that, is that fair to say? It's, it's such a 100% you hit the nail right on the head. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have to admit to everyone, I'm not a technical guy, but I have a tremendous amount of sensitivity well, to, to capture you are technical. the technicality. But from a different angle, but yeah. I am an artist. I think I am an artist no that I live with them, what mm -hmm. they're going through, so, no so I can understand. So it's easy for me. Mm -hmm. People, you know, say, how can you just put this together and how you can... I said, you know what, there's a perfect connection between the head and the heart, man. Mm -hmm. And I live this thing. And, and I say sometimes, look like I, in this project, look like an age, another three years, because it's so much that I give. There's so mm -hmm. much. Is, and I try not to get to the point where you sterilize things, you know, get so sterile. Mm -hmm. that you, 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 you're polishing so much that mm -hmm. it, then it just, just you go like, I don't want to take away the soul. I, I don't mm -hmm. want to overdo this. Somehow, I become... Uh, it, it, like an oh, artist, and it, and it shows. I mean, just yeah. as a fan, you can hear as, it. As, a, as, a, as what I was getting ready to say, because the balance. We, we have a mutual friend named Brian Abnett who is you know, yeah, Brian, I who know. is as much for me in my career. The only kind of big brother mentor guy I've ever had. Quite loved, a guy. Loved him for years. Anyways, but um, and during the early Josh years and times I was around Foster and so so forth. One of the things about records you're involved with, and just as a listener, you, a you don't get tired of them. B, whatever the elements of that artist, like there's a lot of blackness in Celine Dion. Sure is. And you capture that in ways that, that manage that balance between that R&B side and the pop side and where she lives on the charts, but where she is as an artist. And then it'll switch to Groban, and it'll switch to Buble, and, oh, and, and, and all of it. So there's a contemporaneous, but there's a respect for the, where they come from, and that takes an artist to recognize that an artist, and it's, it's just beautiful mm -hmm. to hear. And oftentimes with our audience, not to get on soliloquy, because they're so technology-oriented, well, the, the idea... It's asking the question the, the, without the, answering it. <laughs> thank you, Dave. The idea should be to not let technology get in your way to utilize it to get to the artistry. Fair? Absolutely fair. And you know, the other part is that I tell, when I, when I, get, when I produce a record, I, I, I design the, 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 the platform, the foundation platform for the art, for the artist to perform. Um, there comes the vocal time, vocal uh, day, and, and here we are. We, we, we get in some kind of frame, make sure the artist is comfortable, make sure the artist feels good, there's a move, there's an energy, there's a vibe, there is a connection, there's a trust. Fundamental that any producer and any artist must have a trust. Any producer and engineer, there's a trust. Their time with your brain is in one place and the producer is hearing something different. You need to allow you to, to, to get out of there and then you go, what were you saying? <laughs> uh, uh, no, that was not what I was doing. I was doing something else. Mm -hmm. So all that there's stages of respect and allow the artist, because I think uh, an engineer, a producer, a musician, we're all artists, and we all work in conjunction to, to, mm -hmm. to elevate and to give the, 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 the one who's going to be on, on front stage, mm -hmm. we've got to build a platform. And, and it's... Um, it's, it's important to me that, um, that, that there's there's the trust and, and there is this energy that, that, that goes along with it, you know? Every uh, artist that you, that you work with, I've read quotes from them, they all, that's the one thing, that they, they trust you. They trust you almost immediately. And it's a common quote that they, um, first of all, they, they, they say he brings a passion and energy that, that, this, that I needed. He's very, 
He knows me inside and out and trust. That's, that's the word that I think every that's, that's, one of them have for you is that. I, I, I think I earned that not by, by saying or, or, or I live by one particular law in the law. You're as good as your last project. <laughs> <laughs> Done deal. You know, what happened then, there was another frame of mind. My life was in a different place, my whole thing. In, 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 in trust is, is something that you need to earn. So when I sing, it, artists performing, we go through the process, we go through, through, through takes after takes. I'm a frustrated singer, but I, I can sing. I, I, can, I can sing uh, phrases to artists that I think, and I can also point, says, you, need to, you need to be vulnerable in here, this line. This is, see, listen, what, read what this line is talking about, what, what the writer meant here. You are singing it, but you're not delivering. It, it doesn't come across. So no matter how many takes I have, and how good you're in tune, yeah. and how good is the pocket, we can fix that. The motion I can't correct. There is no, there is no uh, plucking they can correct that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the end of it. And no, then it's, it's, uh, and then it's the putting together. But the, the other part is that which is I never use in my compression in terms of the technical aspect. It only occurs when I'm putting it down. I believe that I want to hear the sound that I want to hear when it goes down. So no matter where later on is played or, or rough mix is being done, something is established. Oh, okay. And then it comes the, the part where I said, I can make you sing three times. You sing when you are singing with me in the mic. I make you sing when I put it together, all the pieces. And then I can make you sing when I'm, when I'm massaging your emotion, when I'm reach for mm -hmm. things that are like very deep high. And so the, that's what to me is... You can, you can see the passion in them now. Herb, Herb, please don't let me forget to talk about El Vola. I want to talk about that, but I've got so many questions. Um, going back to something you said earlier, um, do you worry about what's going on exactly today? Because music changes every six, eight months. Do you, do you, <laughs> your, your records sound modern, but yet they don't sound like they're trying to be sometimes. Like, do you... Like, 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 for example, in the Buble records, you've got loops, you know. Uh, how do you balance the, 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 the modern with the traditional? Because you, some of your records, a lot of them have a traditional component, but yet they don't sound old. I know they're not. I know they were made this month. How do you do that? Well, look, I'm very in tune. Oh, 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 oh. There's a whole new world up there of way of making records. Uh, I have... Um, 15-year-old and 11-year-old that live with me now. My other kids are all grown up. They're they are gone. and So I like to hear everything that's going on. I like to be aware of everything. So you love Coldplay? Coldplay, one of the greatest band in the world for me. I <laughs> uh, was in London one time working at Air Studio, and there was uh, um, uh, the lead singer. You know, you can see he was writing some, some lyrics. And, and, I, I, I'm a very shy guy, but I wanted to say, man, I, I just want to hug you, man, because your music, <laughs> your and it's like, oh. I didn't want to buy it crazy. So I left it. He was in the mood, so I, I didn't touch that. But anyway, there is a room. I, I like to keep myself updated, but without losing the, without losing mm -hmm. the integrity yeah, of the record. That's the word. Integrity. Buble has an integrity. Yeah. You know, he, he's, in this moment, Leave Mr. Tony Bennett, Mr. Tony Bennett, in one place, don't touch him because he's in his own place, mm -hmm. like Luciano Pavarotti was in one place. Mm -hmm. But then there are other. At this moment, I was in Michael Bublé as the greatest in, in that style of music, the, the man who can swing better than anybody. Mm -hmm. he, he feels it because he's honest. He's honest about what he's mm -hmm. saying. But also, we all wanted to have a little taste of today. So, mm -hmm. so if it's balanced properly in, yeah. in the spectrum of music, mm -hmm. people will go, there's something like you. There's something special about that. Absolutely. It's not so hundred percent traditional. Because if I think if I stay hundred percent traditional, probably won't ha we, we won't have the success that we have. Um, no, I mean it's already been done. Why do it? But also to just a, a, a note once again to you guys at home. Um, you guys should go. He, he mentioned swing. You guys should go check out um, Buddy Rich records, uh, Woody Herman records. Those, those guys had as much balls as any. T.I. record, is any, any record, and, and Buble, I don't know the man, but uh, I, I am familiar with, with uh, Umberto, and, and, and he likes drums like that too, and, and, and those drums on those, those 40s cats, don't ignore those guys, they were, they were rocking. They were actually, yeah. Um, um, the, 
Another thing about your records that 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 I've I've tried to copy, I I I, I can't do it exactly right, but I try. Um, I like records that have width and depth. If if here's a record, here's the vo here's the here's the vocal, here's the drums, and here's the guitar. I like to be able to reach out and find the hi hat. I like to reach out and find the singer. Your records have width and depth, and I. I know you spend a lot of time creating that. I, I, obviously, we don't have time for a course on how to create width and depth, but what's your thought process on, on doing that, if you can share something with us? I'm a three-dimensional kind of person. But some uh, of the stuff is just who you are. It's not even a technique. That, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's how you, you hear things and what you, how you force your brain, how you, your brain forces you to, to, to get there and to find out whether it's just it's like... You know what it is? It's like cooking. It's like your grandmother can tell you the greatest recipe in the world, and it's how she throw the salt, and how oh, she yeah. mix the oil, That's and right. how she cook that. She use gas, she use electrical, and how she stare that thing. Uh, that at the it. end of the day, says, "Hey, son, check this out." And you go, "Oh my God, oh, I haven't eaten anything like this." But I, I, I give you the recipe. It's not even close. Yeah. But it, it's the thing is that is that. Like I said, I'm a three-dimensional kind of person. Uh, I, I describe my work, and I have always done this, is I should be able to close my eyes and walk in and out of a mix. Oh, wow. Mm. And I'm very visual. You, you do I'm that. Very I can do that with your mix. I, I can. I think at one time in my early part of my engineer career, I, I, I did an interview in where I have to literally, I, I draw a mix. Because I, I, placement is, is visual. Mm -hmm. As I'm sitting in front of two near field monitors, they're, they're, the placement sometimes, it really disturbs me if it's something and it's not quite yeah. exactly where it is. Something in my brain says, that thing is, mm -hmm. you got to move it. And we move it a little bit that way, or, or we cue a little different, that somehow it, it, it will generate what it, the, the, create the job that it's supposed to do, but it not interfere. But, but it's, it's how, I, how I live. I, I, that's how, how Michael, I am. Michael Jackson once said that you saw in colors, that you saw music in colors. It, uh, Sudin mentioned that too, Bruce. Yeah, Sudin mentioned that too. I remember we were doing We Are the World, the, the original, the original We Are the World, with, uh, and, and we did it at a studio called Landshare. That's, how, yeah. how, that's when we got the basic track. Yeah. Quincy made the call, and here we are, he said, hum, we got a responsibility, and the rest of history, you guys know, we went in, we talked. We, and then we jump into when we went to A&M, and yeah. then Michael came first, and he recorded his first parts, and then everybody came in, we did this, we did this. And Quincy also is a guy who, who, who talks in color. Yes, I get Pisces people who are into color. Oh, you know? Pisces? you Pisces. March 18th. You, you're March 18th? Yeah. That's my birthday. Wow. <laughs> Dude. Stop the show. Yeah. We're going to party March 18th. Now. We have the champagne. It's not yeah, March. Yeah, pop it out. <laughs> March 18th. Yeah, that's incredible. My daughter also, Isabella, March 18th. My Tell daughter. Me, that's, that's where the passion is. Isn't my it? daughter mm -hmm. is uh, March uh, 13th. <sighs> this is crazy. So here we are in, in, in this thing. So, so 14th, excuse me. So the day my comes. My sister's 13th. The day comes where, for the first time, I remember we're putting this together. I'm along a Lion Share studio. You know, I went very early. I was very eager to start building these things. And, and, and what I did is just, uh, I put every vocal. Every single performer was in one fader, only one fader. No. I took the time, and uh, I processed each one of them so it was a consistent, continuous. It's like, like one artist just keep changing sound, but the motion and the feeling keep rotating. There comes the time, da -da -ba. from one guy to the other, you know, until Michael went into the first time he sang the chorus. And, and, and everything had color, you know, my rhythm had a color. My uh, keyboards had different color. The voices have color background. And when when Michael walked in, the first thing he says, I don't, I, he didn't say I want to hear it. And he went, I love this. He says, you 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 hear in color. I said, that's all my life I've done this. That's how I survived, you know. In 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 color is something to me. Is I'm, I'm a very colorful kind of person. I, I love that, you know. Yeah, um, I think I think that you walk in my studio, you like it. Well, the it's the, very the, the part of the world you're from. There's bright sun, you know. Like I grew amazing. up in a bright sun. You know what? Uh, you guys at home, once again, I get upset when I have a group with four singers. You guys have no idea how difficult it is to to mix. Uh, how many singers did you have on we on that song? Like forty. First of all, this is what I recall. There were six microphone and three lead vocal per mic. So we have, um, was 24? Wow. It was 24 lead vocal, 
couple of bunch of ad libs that occur at the end when Ray Charles goes into his ad libs and goes mm -hmm. to Bruce Springsteen's and Bob Dylan's and, and it was just something unbelievable. And then we have the choir. So the choir was recorded three dimension. We have proximity mic, close mic to control addiction. I'm very particular about. I want to hear far away, but also want to understand what you're saying. I don't mm -hmm. want to. I don't want to bomb you. Remember where the world is. So a, a very fanatic about that. That's, That's what like one of my mixes just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I recognize oh, no. that song. I no, mixed no. it. That's what I that would need a recall. <laughs> so in order for my crazy head to obtain that result <laughs> is different microphone. Different microphone will generate a certain frequency that will give uh, help the, the addiction. Then we have the, 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 the three the middle who you capture a certain environmental thing and then at a certain point, and as, as, the, as the mix is being um, uh, done, and as the records develop, to to sort of uh, reach for certain dynamic, I, I move mics around. So, so I was going to ask you. So that the records start doing this thing without you even realize. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you want to be embraced by this huge choir while this person is expressing himself emotionally about some aspect of the lyric, mm -hmm. and you keep playing this game, and this game, and you keep polishing, and you back away, and you listen, and you play it, and it, do I have the same impact, do I feel the same way when I'm playing it, something very small, or I'm only feeling that when I'm blasting it, which mm -hmm. when you blast it, everything kind of feels good, yeah, it goes right through your skin, mm -hmm. but I want to feel touch when it's just in... Nowadays, you have to feel nothing. it through a laptop. Exactly. Oh. Sometimes we do that. We just hook up a little, little, little radio, or we just make a CD, and we play them out of the... Out of the, out of the um, out of the laptop, yeah. but um, um, because I think in color, everything has a place. But I don't want everything to be isolated. I want to be everything to have a place. But then you, like if you like dismember food. one part, it's like your body. You take one part of your body, mm -hmm. you're not the same anymore. Yeah. The, the pain will go over there. Something will help you. Absolutely. You know, like I never forget <laughs> that story. I got there. I was a little boy, and we go we go on vacation to the ocean. Uh -huh. And my cousin and I, we were just kids, and there were two beautiful cats in the house. And I said to my cat, what happened when we shaved them? <laughs> <laughs> so I shaved one, and the other one ran away. And my grandmother says, you don't understand what you did. The, the cat, that's how he sends his time and, and his distance, and he can run, because the cat was walking in, a little funny. And, and, and I will never forget that thing. And, and to me, as cruel that was, it was a great lesson. That, you know, it just... And somehow all those things play a part how how mm -hmm. I feel music. Yeah, I understand how what you're I saying. Like. Symbolically, that you take something away and you feel like that. I, and I want to trust. I want to put that in, in, in trust someone. And the only person at this point that I can do that is, is Christian, because somehow oh, he's picking up where I'm at. And I say, look. And I always say that you know, look, we all learn from somebody. I learned things from assistant engineers in studios like A and M in the days or in New York. It doesn't matter. There's always something oh, yeah. you can learn from me and, you, and you know that very well. You guys know that. 100%. Same in any business, man. Somebody can say, mm -hmm. hey, man, you know, what about That's this? Right. And you go, you know what? Like, that makes sense. But either it's not exactly what you're saying, but something will trigger a better idea. Humberto, yeah. you, um, you, you kind of touched on it, but when you're, when you're, when you're doing a vocal, you don't compress as much as you take the fader and and you 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 ride a lot of the vocal level instead of letting the compressor catch it and and help you with the volume it, 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 explain that to our guys at home because that's i'm not sure you guys want to do that it takes a long time it, it's um i would say it takes it, it takes time and it takes um you really have to feel you have to feel the performance. Yeah, absolutely. Not necessarily sing a song along with, but you, but you kind of like is is the performance going each and every line? You just keep you keep just feeling it up and feeling in 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 because the compressor will to, to a certain the compressor's kind of music, stupid. It doesn't know what compressor is just doing what you tell him to do. You just don't let anything go by here. And if something drops here, trying to lift them up so we have some kind of uh, um, consistency mm -hmm. of, of volume. But I can't do it. I hear that and it destroys my hair. It just yeah. kills me. There is a little compression when it goes in, slightly, just enough to 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 take some of the the aggressiveness of of certain singers. And then, uh, when I produce a record, even when I mix, I, I I I process a verse and I process, and then when the chorus goes in, there's another approach because because the sound change, mm -hmm. the, the throw will generate a certain sound that in, that affects you. That's why a lot of people say, I don't know how can you get the vocals. Well, I, I, sometimes I go in different step. So so. Um, uh, some some of the vocal it, it technically is 
the, vo the, the, the chorus are processed slightly different, you know, for whatever it is that, that I need, that I hear, that I think. But the writings amount on the vocal, the vocal writings are, are, are endless. I'm, I'm in the thousands. Wow. Never using, you know, in... in do, you, um, do you use Pro Tools now to, to help you with that, or do you still do it with a fader? We have a system with Christian now, which is fantastic. It's a producer and a person who has so much hands-on into the technical part. The record is made, the, record, the arrangement is designed, sonically and musically, the record is mixed. I put my heart and soul into a mix, I walk away, Christian takes over, and we dissect the mix in stamps. It's all dissect. Um, bass, uh, drums are dissecting about five different sets of stamp, kick, uh -huh. snare, overhead, tom, guitar, so on, depend, you know, uh, vocals, vocal drive, vocal verb, verb effect. So, and then allows me to walk away completely from the mix. I'm no, I'm no attached to the mix. He takes over. It's, it sits in the Pro Tool domain, and we begin to, I begin to start and I say, you know, bad. I think it's too much. Let's move it. So it allows me to be more objective. Oh, okay. And then we go into like, you know what, the vocals is slightly irritable right there. Or let's just be, let's just, how can we enhance an emotion moment where I, I wanted to create more, either is a, is a, is a verb uh, right that is so radical that kind of like, <gasps> it goes into a moment like that and you kind of create uh -huh. that or, uh -huh. or is in the cue things or in, uh -huh. in the, the mix it begin to, begin to clean up, uh -huh. begin to transform and into something. So allow somebody else to take over. Uh -huh. Or he started it and then I finished How it. How long does that process, is that like a day or, can, or it can go a little bit like an hour a day over a week or? No, I would say about an hour or something we oh, go through wow. it. And I love it. I want to remind you to ask the question that you want me to remind you about because Batter's Box is coming oh. up. I've got a question and you got a question. So My mother, my mother was named after an opera, and, and um, I'm, I'm kind of drawn towards opera. And, and you, you just did a record, uh, El Volo. It's three young, I think when you started, they were like teenagers. Three Fourteen. Young, Fourteen and a half. Three young Italian men From that sing... Incredible, Herb. Uh, have, you, have, you, have you familiar with that record? No, I'm not. It's, 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 it's platinum and a half now, isn't it? It's like a record's million. doing very well. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is the kind of music it doesn't really, there's no radio. It's only this television exposure here mm -hmm. and there. Wonderful. What a mouth. But it's, 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 it's preserving something that's, uh, that's in short supply now, you know? Like tell, the, like tell us about the it. older guys are getting older. You, you know what it is? I think. Uh, you, uh, all of us, we have a responsibility. We have to say that we grow up with one of the greatest artists in the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, from groups to female to yeah. to mm -hmm. the greatest songwriters, producers, musicians. I mean, some of the, the days where hey, you, you got you got Jeff Beckerrod and yeah. you have David Foster playing piano, and yeah. you got uh, Dave Hangate, or mm -hmm. you got you got two keyboard players. You got David Page and David Foster. Oh my God! You got you got the greatest mm -hmm. musician, and and all you you presented was a, a bunch of chords, and what came out, how they interpreted mm -hmm. it was fantastic. So so we were lucky in that sense. In 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 in, in now the music, in no disrespect, please, top forty is incredible. But I think uh, there's not that many great artists. There are many great. Uh, record makers, mm -hmm. this new generation of these very talented programmers, and they hear the music in a certain way, and, and we have the, mm -hmm. the rap thing, and in, 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 in you can tell the, at one point rap was very hardcore, very hard, very, very, very street, as raw as can be. Mm -hmm. But through through the course of the year, melodic things begin to be Absolutely. incorporated. Here you got the rap, and all of a sudden the hook now Absolutely. is the melodic thing. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, you, you hear a uh, um, uh, Eminem record and Rihanna, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I, uh, I think the love song is called I, "I Love the Way." You love me. You I love the way you lie. I love the way you lie. Yeah. Yeah. One of our guests wrote that. You mm -hmm. follow me, this great Melody, uh, young yeah. artist, and, and when courses. she goes, and then he goes, and then he goes into this hard statement about how mm -hmm. you know it, it was. The, the, there you have the perfect combination of both worlds. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, it, when you have the opportunity to somehow find young talent, whether it's Top 40, this kind of music, or Il Volo, these three kids from, this is the first time it ever happened in the history of Italian music where an artist was signed directly into, in America, uh, major uh, on label. Uh, Jimmy, I've been signed them mm, wow. on, three, on a box about five minutes. He, he, we show him a video, 
in, in, in he said, five album deals? Wow. Go do it. So he gave us a great, he gave us a green light to make a fantastic record. It when is I say an respons record. responsibility is great because the youth, and somehow I think our generation of kids, my 15 year old, need to have a choice. You need, yeah. to, need to listen. The greatest record made by all Jay Z in Kanye, in Lip Wayne, in, in Rihanna, Katy Perry, all those fantastic records that are made, Lady Gaga, whatever, but I want her to have another choice. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and we need to protect that. Whatever is an opportunity. To, to do that, we have to. We have it to. enriches their experience. Yeah. I think so. Guys, I want to tell you something. Uh, there's some records that that you that you're gonna have to educate yourself and learn to like. There's some records you're not gonna like the first time you hear them. I grew up with opera. This record just knocked me on my ass. It's a great record, but check it out. And 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 if you don't get it the first time, listen again. If you don't get it again. Uh, research a little bit about opera. Learn, grow. It's it's a it's a really really really. It's not a it's not a record from the 40s. It's a modern record, but it's 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 done the way only Umberto can do it, and that's it's uh, it's a great record. I, I I really like this record, Thank along you. with Lale. He did a great record with. The, I can go on for days. We yeah. gotta have Umberto oh, back. Oh, listen, I, I wasn't even gonna. That's a Spanish, and not my the Spanish thing is another thing because it's I my know. language, man. That's I know. that's that's the 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 roots of. What, what, what I'm all about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's tee up your arm. Batter's oh, box. Oh, batter's box. Are you ready, Umberto? For He's batter's box? Get it, buddy. I get uh, it. <laughs> yeah, love it, love it. Bring in the wine. Let's bring yeah, where's it? Where's it? Manchenko. <laughs> Manchenko cheese. That's how we get you back. So no, cheese, I'm going to bring you the good wine yeah, and some good cheese. There we go. We'll and do we'll it. invite, man. We'll invite. We'll exactly. Okay, so That's next we'll week's guest is Umberto Gatico. Lead vocals. Lead vocal. Um... 251 AK um, telephone. Oh, cool. Um, background vocals. Sheps, uh, microphone. Christian is going to give me the number. CM5. CM5. I like because of the transparency, so it doesn't take too much space in my mix, so it's there beautifully mm, cool. present. And um, acoustic guitar. Oh, I can never get away from uh, an AKG 452. Through a 160 compressor, you can't go wrong. And a GML uh, limiter. That's how I go. There's th it's, it's, uh, the GML limiter. The, GM, the GML uh, AQ. Oh, the, the most musical line. EQ ever ever built in, in, in the music business. Mm -hmm. By George. Mike near the bridge. It's about um, I would say it's about a good six inches from from the pinky. Okay. I use his pinky as a reference. I'm in line with that. Mm. Acoustic piano. Um, 414. Oh. Or uh, I believe it's a Sony microphone. Christian, what's my number? C48. Sony. Hmm? C48. C48, because he's, <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a technical wizard. Um, is, it, is it simple enough for you to describe your, the way you do strings? Uh, I'm very particular strings. I must have AKG for near uh, uh, miking, uh -huh. and as high as I can possibly raise the stands up. And then, Two of them? Um, no, it usually it's about four of them. It goes like like goes. Uh, uh, this is um, string section is here, looking at you. Uh -huh. So it might goes here, it might go here, it might go there, oh, and cool. it might go there. So zigzag, boom, 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 divided first and second, and then I pick them up with a room ambient, which will be the M fifties, Neumann. Wow. And you get the warm, and you get the rooms. Definition, I have it, is I'm mixing when I need to define the melodic line. I, 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 sh oh. I move those, and then I get out of the way. Okay. I keep playing with dynamic. I'm, I'm a dynamic <laughs> crazy. Uh, bass guitar. Uh, bass guitar, direct. A good direct uh, uh, sometime. I mean, in the early, early days, I used a lot of um, a U47 fit in mm -hmm. an RE20. Oh, OK. Yeah, very close to, to get uh, the definition of the notes. Um, kick guitar. I mean, not kick guitar. Electric guitar. Uh, how can you go wrong? It's in fifty sevens. I mean, um, I don't care how many. Yeah. If that's the only mic you have, the guitar's all going to sound great. And then your stereo bus. My stereo bus. We never do anything to it. The stereo bus is all my head. How everything is being presented. Because I can't do anything to it. Because since we dissect the mixes in stems. I see. The, in any compressor overall, will have no significance. It will be. It will be. It will never be the same. Okay, Herb, rate the master. How'd you do? 
Um, one time we had a guest, and I saw a comment where the guy said, I just watched the show, and I got to lie down. <laughs> I, I feel like I got to lie down. No, I talk too much, man. I'm sorry, no, man. Jesus. You don't talk I get nervous, and I talk too much, man. No, no, not at all. Not uh, at all. And, and I'm doing this early. Usually we say, oh, you know, can you come back? Because everybody... We're not even going to ask if you're going to come back. You have to come back. You're well, now, you guys are my buddies now, and you make me feel you make me feel like back. home. Everyone here has been oh, nothing but nice. And, and, and if anything I can do, I think I, you know, I have always. And, 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 and I, Christian is here, and yeah. because is here, I open the door to anybody in my studio. I have helped so many people. people Absolutely. That, check this out. People have called me from different countries. I mean, here's a guy who called me one time. He says, "My name is." Uh, um, Manolo Quijano, mm -hmm. Spanish from Leon, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right outside mm -hmm. Madrid. My uncle was named Manolo. We are a band, blah, 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 blah. And we would like for you to produce our next album. I do a little research. I like his music. Here I am on a plane to Leon. Never been there. We made a beautiful record. Our record was a huge hit. People can come. I say, come to my studio. Hang around. The, the, th the great thing about us, some of these in turn, some of these people who wants to, who wants to be an engineer and they come to my studio, they, uh, Celine Dion could be sitting there when they come <laughs> in and say, you know, I hope that doesn't bother you. This is a friend of mine who just, oh, you know, she's so warm. And so even I remember when Christian came to the studio at one point, I was working with Michael Jackson on the album in Invincible. Oh, wow. He came over uh, record one. Yeah. I said, this is my friend Christian. Hi, Christian. How are you? And here you are. Christian, all of a sudden, he's like, oh talking God. to Michael, you know? Yeah, yeah. The other night, I invited somebody else. I was doing something with Selena Gomez, and, and, and Justin Bieber came in. I tried to get my daughter there. She said, no, Daddy, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> you better come, because this is your best chance to yeah, know these people. Right. Mm -hmm. She didn't show up. But here's the kid who never been in the studio before, and he wanted to witness it. it well, here, I'm open. Here's the fun part. So being open in some of our corner office questions, where some of our audience get to ask questions, and we have the original cat. The original architect. Man, I forgot. Zan I forgot. Dakari. I got uh, I got Drew at the studio working, and Zan, our, our original corner hey, office. Uh, Let's yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Zan. We have a bunch of questions. So you talk about a, another episode. We need about four for, for all these questions. I'm going to start with this one. This is a question for Dave and Umberto. With more and more people listening to um, all the hardware you guys put in on a pair of earbuds or low bit rate, bit rate MP3s, how has this affected your mixing recently, or can you elaborate on changes you've made to make uh, your mixes have the most potential on today's popular platforms? Um, do you pay attention to that? Do you actually think about it, or you just go be Umberto? And... No, I pay attention. Yes, I pay attention to that. Yeah, you see. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I just, I just, I, 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 I survive the environment, and I just, I just, I just make it work. <laughs> that and, says it all. And, and, and you need to do that, and, and you need to use your imagination and follow your heart and, and, and trust your ear and, and, mm -hmm. and sort of do whatever it takes to overcome that. I think, Umberto, I think we ought to try and pass a law that every person in America has to have the same exact set of speakers that we okay. And then we can mix for one set of speakers. <laughs> Man, we we he'd own the world. Uh, I'd I'd be doing a lot better than I am now. And, no, uh, you you've done some fine like, breakers, and oh, I, I really respect you. your work. And that because I, I like to take this opportunity to say that you know I'm in front of you, someone you make some great records, oh, brother. Thank you, Alberto. You know, thank you. And we all learn from that. I mean, thank I'm you. I'm I'm a person who truly. I love to hear music and, I, and what you know. The stuff is good. Mm -hmm. You have to give credit and you have to respect. Yeah. There's certain stuff. It's not like you put it down. It just doesn't do anything for you. Yeah. You just yeah. you just turn the page. You move right over. You know that this article doesn't interest me. You move on to something yeah, that you absolutely. do. Zan, fire up another. At what point of the mixing process do you automate before or after gain staging and processing? Automation begins immediately. Because from the very moment that I sit and I start doing things, sometimes I like to capitalize that moment. The moment it's oh, telling me okay. something and yeah. it feels something. If it's, if, it, if it's a vocal thing, many times I just have a vocal basic rhythm and the vocal begins to rule immediately. I want to be, always be in touch of all the stuff as opposed to, well, later on I will lift this up or I'll mm -hmm. bring this down from the beginning. So I'm always in line with true dynamic. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Dave, as a mixer who takes risks and is hired for taste, can you recall a time where you did something dramatic that you thought was revolutionary, taking the record to another level, and the label was afraid to take the risk? How, how did you Pretty handle that? Pretty much every record, I hope. I mean, if I'm, if I'm, 
Uh, I've got a philosophy. I don't want to take time away from Umberto, but I've got a philosophy. If you play your work for ten people, three should violently hate it, three should just be okay, and four would have to own it no matter what they had to sell to get it. When you please everybody, that's the perfect sign that you're just mediocre. So don't be happy when everybody likes what you do. Be happy when your work is enough to upset a few people and then have the, the majority of them want to own it. But yeah, right. we'll go into that, we'll, we'll go into that yeah, another answer. time because <clears throat> that's a deceptively great question, but I want to give time to Umberto. Okay. How about, does Sorry. Christiana have a question? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll the question, yeah, the okay. question basically is, uh, it's from Ludwig Diaz, says, Hola Umberto, what's your experience been like working with Latin rock bands and what advice can you give upcoming producers in the Latin world? Muchas gracias and viva Chile. Yeah, viva Chile, right? Viva Chile. It's that, uh, first of all, um, working with, uh, for instance, La Ley, that's, it, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the most successful, I would say, uh, South American, uh, with the exception of the Argentinian, because I think the Argentina were the pioneer of the rock. You know, uh, so the stereo, all mm -hmm. this, uh, this fellow who is, um, uh, this great, the great singer who is right now just still in coma for almost two years. Oh, Gustavo Cerati. Gustavo yeah. Cerati. He's still in coma. Still in coma. This guy had a, a, a thing in Venezuela on the stage and he's been for almost two years like this. Wow. Uh, um, the language is it makes a little. It's not like you know uh, uh, English is is more of a rhythm thing. You can sing anything. The Spanish you have to be careful. And, and to me, I pay a lot of attention in order to to, to bring out uh, the, the the energy of the rock. Um, my only advice is to um, keep the bass nice and low. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's a whole other show, too. You know, to keep the bass and low, nice drums, and make sure the your rock, your, your Spanish rock records are incredible. I, like I said, I I I I, I survive in this environment. <laughs> the only thing I can never do is the big law in right now that these kids. I don't know how they get it, man. I, I just some of the stuff. I said yeah, just that law in. I don't know where it come from and how they maintain it. <laughs> but um, the rock thing is, I like it. I love it. Go ahead, sir. Do you want to translate this one? Um, do it in English. You sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, this question is for Humberto. Is your approach different when you mix solo versus uh, groups? Can you, can you answer it in Spanish? No, el, el, <laughs> no, 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 sí, 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 no, no. Eh, eh, uh, Which eh, one is it? No, 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 no. I just, no, 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 no. I just had a heart attack. I pissed off Humberto. No, 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 no. Um, no hay diferencia. No, no existe diferencia. Es, es, es o, o, un grupo. O, o un cantante individual, el, el proceso es el mismo. Es el mismo proceso. La primera vez que Pensaba en su lugar tuvo sexo con gente. No. No de nosotros. Esto es fabuloso. Uno más. ¿Sabes lo que dijo en español? Sí, sí. Dijo que si tengo que volver a este show de mierda, me voy a matar. No, quiero traer el vino de cheese, hombre. Aquí hay uno para Humberto. Me gustaría escuchar or you talk uh, a little bit about your amazing piano sound on the early David Foster records you did, like the Chicago and Bill Champlins. Um, what was the, there was a question there? Yeah, talk about the process. Oh, talk about the process. Actually, uh, I, I, because I was happened to be working with one of the greatest musician, keyboard player like David Foster's, and, and we were making his record, um, the process was very simple. It was, a, 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 and to me, it's like they say, you know, it's all in the angle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was placement, and I think a microphone placement is, as you know, vital. Okay, wow. it, can, it, it, it can put a smile on your face, or it can really tell the assistant to change the yeah. mic because that sucks. It's all how the placement goes. It's on time. We have to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. As good as our, 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 uh, someone who's helping us. And, and it was a process between uh, a GML again, my favorite equalizer, uh, Mr. Massenberg, take my hat off, uh, created it. And in a 160 dBx, which I think is part one of the most all uh, um, compressor. The, 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 the one with the meters or the? The meter. Oh, okay, good. The meter. I was, I was going to, I, 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 I use the 160Xs all the time, and I'm like, I can't make it sound like that. But uh, the meter to me is probably... You, you meant VUs. Huh? The VU. The VU? VU. The VU meter, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, you know, 
know, I'm using whatever. That's the one he uses, right? And that was the wow. process we use on, on David. And again, also, it, it, the piano will also have a tremendous impact in the sound, is according to how it, the, the pressure that the man, and David had a big, hard, hard hit. It's so different player, but um, it was very important to me because since it was he the producer, when the piano play, I want to make sure he, he shine, he had his place in the mix. And wow, well, I learned a lot today. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been served. <laughs> uh, I hope will, we, will you come back? I'd be more than thrilled to come back. Next, come back, next time, I'd be more prepared. <laughs> no, no, no. No, you no, don't, you change, don't change anything. No, We're, think, we weren't prepared. We are Man, I learned so much, Herb. I learned a new cuss word. And Pleasure. we got new friends now in the Absolutely. business. <laughs> and I hope you can come visit to me one time. Anytime. You know, sometime we'll come to the studios, man. Okay. And, and maybe we can do a little something we so, can. They, so okay. they can, you know. Yeah, well, don't, that's a good idea. Don't, don't think that me and the producer are always thinking about that already. You know, that would so be just, great. We just want to offend you and ask at the top. We no, you know. <laughs> From from a, a, a big orchestration, I had a great time at Abbey Row when I recorded The Boys. Oh, wow. One wow. of the greatest studio in the world, right? Wow. I've seen and, pictures. And I follow, I, I, should, I should send you my, my setup. They're looking a little funny because I have one advice from a great uh, arranger named Paul Backmaster. He says, there is a certain resonance in the room that it stays there and it really affects the definition of violas and cellos. And, and I kind of follow his, his advice and, in, 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 you know, they used to do big movies and, and, uh -huh. but I put dividers between the violas and the cello. And the fellow at the end of the session says, you know what, mate, I have to give it to you. It made all the difference because it's, look, you're talking about this big classical record, you know, he has this beautiful orchestration, it's all beautiful movements and parts and they travel through the course of, of, of the, and then you have this voices of these kids and then we go into harmony then into all this um, traditional sort of a, a classical arrangement i always add a little bit of something of today yeah it could be a, well, that's a, your personality i put a little some guitar slide find a tone that is musical that doesn't sound that doesn't look like it's completely disjoined from the arrangement mm -hmm. so um, what an experience was that, man, to, to work at Abbey Road. Before you say goodbye, and as okay. our time clicks, hey, guys, uh, obviously, what a great show. Christian, thank you, thank you. for reaching out yeah. and making this possible. Thank you for bringing me. Um, one more time, remember, get your Facebook, uh, at, like this at Facebook, Avid for Students. Yes. Um, you can also go to pensadosplace.tv slash avid. You can enter Facebook. You can enter using your email. Pro Tools 10, we want to thank our friends at Avid for doing that. You see it up on the screen there. So that, make sure you enter oh, one, one a week. It's going to be a good one. What a great value. And um, again, what a great show. Dave. Oh, man, I learned so much, Herb. Take um, us home. I learned, I learned a lot, and I, I learned a new cuss word in my native tongue. What was that cuss word I learned today? It's gilipollas. Gilipollas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to do the urban version of that. <laughs> gilipollas. <laughs> oh, oh, that you hurt. It properly, man. There you go, man. Yeah, man you struggled saying you were going. <laughs> no. You went like Healy Boy. Got it. I'm working. Roberto, <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I for love you, man. And and stay. I just keep it up. Keep oh, doing it. Thank I you. think there's. Thank you. People need this. And the next time we can do something 100% yes. okay. Spanish. Okay. Right? All Espanol. That'd be great. For my Absolutely. people. For my people. Absolutely. See. <laughs> See, uh, no, I love the way I said no. <laughs> Guys, you got a lot of homework tonight. Uh, I want you to check out the El Volo record. I want you to check out Lele if you're not familiar with them. I want you to check out some of the techniques that, that Umberto has talked about. Listen to his records and, 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 and apply these techniques to what we're doing now. I do, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, so you should check it out. All right, next week. Thank you.